So I'm taking, I am smiling big time on the inside because I introduced the two of you. That's right. That's right. And I'm, that's and right. I'm, that's one thing that I'm going to be, I'm yeah. going to be proud of that for a long, long time. Yeah, you had to use the Loveless Cafe to bring us together. That's right. Which exactly. Yeah. A good use of the Loveless. <laughs> but I thought, man, of all the people that need to get to know each other, here's here's two guys. This would yes. make uh, make total sense. And and uh, we we're talking about doing things with Chuck as well in the yes. future. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you know, Tommy Coombs lives in Nashville too. Well, you, you know. know what? I've never met Tommy. We need to. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I would love to have good man. Have him on. He's he and Chuck are two fifths of love song. <laughs> Actually, if you count me in, that's three fifths because <laughs> I was in the band for a while. That's right. <laughs> Fair enough. Would it ever happen that we could get some live music in here some morning? Sure. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm uh, limited in my abilities, but I'll, I'll sing. <laughs> no, I mean as far as live playing, you know. Yeah, if, if you could turn the, turn the heat on. Ah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got my shoes. I'm sitting on my feet. It's a little thermostat on the wall, Phil. You're welcome to go in there and well, just slide it up. Well, Ken, you're smart. You walked in, well, smart. You walk in with a jacket. You're both wearing jackets. I don't want to hear this. Come on. Oh, we've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You're welcome to the refrigerator. That's the, way, the way we look at it. It is summertime outside. Chuck, are you cold? No, I'm fine. See, Chuck's fine. Yeah. Oh, well, right. you can't go by point. that. No. That's right. <laughs> I've always been kind of numb. So. And it's going to, uh, with a little help from my friend's benefit, occurring from 7 until 9 at the school's concert hall, Phil Keggy, Ken Mansfield, a group called the Wanna Beatles, and Winona. We're hearing Winona is going to be a part of right. this as well. Right. And uh, admission is $20 per person. You can call the school at 255-8355. It's not a big performance hall, right? I think so it's about 200 people or something. Mm. It's going to be a very intimate type thing. You yeah. need to get your yeah. tickets early. Yes. Okay, Ken, yes. 42 years ago, yes. you were, what, 13 years old, <laughs> executive at Capitol Records, um, when Sgt. Peppers was released. Right. What, what, what do you remember about that? Because this is an album. I mean, you talk about an album that yeah. changed music. Sgt. Pepper, uh, you know, we had the record, we had the band, but when Sgt. Pepper came out, I think almost all of us stood back and said, this is beyond... We can't make any claim. This is just so... I can remember us sitting around hearing that thing for the first time, the executives at Capitol, and uh, just blew our minds. It was just beyond anything. And I think it changed everything. I do. I really think that was a mile marker, you know. Absolutely. Now, out of that also came the Paul is Dead thing. Yeah, which I was very involved in. I was going to say, <laughs> you, you've got a little bit to say about, about that as well. Well, yeah, because uh, what they did for me is when that thing started, I was the only contact in America at the time uh, for the Beatles. And uh, when they did that, they didn't tell me what the deal was. They didn't tell me if it was a promotion thing or whether it was real or whether it was a hoax or nothing. And so they just shut down. It got so much, you know, at the offices in London there were so many phone calls and so many people. They shut down their phones and just locked the doors, but they didn't tell me anything. <laughs> was it a setup? Was it something that they did? You know, I've never really found out. But I, in all honesty, because I've asked everybody, and for some reason nobody's, you know, copping to what it was. But I just think it's something that got started innocently, and the Beatles saw it going. They thought, let, play it, along with let it. it roll. Just let yeah. it roll. You and, know? and so the more you look, the more yeah. you see, well, he's yeah. barefoot in this picture, and yeah. he's wearing a black flower in this picture. I know, and you know, and the big one was where they uh, to the tape that John said I buried Paul. Which he did. Actually, it's cranberry sauce. Cranberry it, sauce. That's well, what he's saying, isn't it? Well, no. What he was saying on that thing was uh, uh, he was too loud in the mix when they were recording, and he said, "I'm," which is a common phrase, I'm buried Burying Paul, like I need more oh. Paul in my headsets, and so oh, okay. turn me down and turn Paul up. No, that's what I was oh. told. I thought I heard George, George Martin say that he was saying cranberry sauce. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. So you you weren't so were you getting lots of phone calls? Oh gosh, it shut down my office. I mean, <laughs> no, it really did. It it just shut down the the phones at Capitol. And sold a lot of records. Yeah, so what I did was I had a bunch of things that Paul had signed to me uh, before he was dead and during he was dead and after he was dead. <laughs> and uh, I sent him off to a criminologist in Chicago who was a handwriting, a very famous handwriting guy, and he sent back and said, yes, these are all the same person. And, so, and you went public with that? Yeah, I just gave it to all the, the phone people and the secretaries and stuff, and then I shut off my phone and <laughs> locked my door and let them handle it. But, still have the signatures? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you still have them? Yeah. 
did. That, I mean, if if that was if that was a setup, what a brilliant yeah. setup. Yeah. And if it was by accident, what a fortunate accident for exactly. Capital for 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 EMI and yeah. you know in, in in London and for you guys for Capital Records because yeah. it sold a lot of records. The uh, picture on the Abbey Road album where that Volkswagen has twenty nine IF and that had been twenty nine if, if Paul wouldn't have been killed. Yeah. Right. And right. Jack Oliver, who was the head of international for Apple, I asked him this about three months ago, and he said that. We wanted to shoot the cover there. That Volkswagen was there. We couldn't find the owner. We kept trying. We got everything cleared off. We just finally gave up, and we shot the picture with that Volkswagen there. So that's where that bit was, you know. So. Wow. <laughs> were you were you there for any of that for the shoot? Of the, no, no, no. <coughs> they, they did all the, all that without. Oh you. yeah, yeah. That that is amazing. Um, and the other story you can tell us, Phil, you got any questions for Ken? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like every time I'm around him, I want to ask him questions. Well, Connie had a great deal to do with you coming to know the Lord Jesus. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She brought me to the Lord. I, I came to Nashville. My life was a mess. I was a stoner. I had a guru. I mean, I was broke. You know, I had a bad rep. And uh, I was going to come back to Nashville and just hook up with, you know, the outlaw gang and just go crazier because everything, I lost everything in L.A. And my business went under. I just it was just terrible. And you were heavy. You were knee deep into Eastern religions oh, yeah. and philosophy oh, and yeah. everything. I was a major cello, a cello of an international guru. So anyway, I came to Nashville. I thought I'm just going to you know pick up where I left off here. I'm going to get more crazy and and do more bad things than ever. <laughs> and uh, I met Connie like the first day I was here. Really? And uh, she was deep in her walk with the Lord at that time. And uh, we had this real problem because I agreed that Jesus was an ascended master and he was one of the ways. And she said, no, he's the way. <laughs> and God put us together. We fell in love the minute we saw each other. It took about 10 seconds. And uh, <laughs> and so we just dealt with this. And finally one day she, she came to me because we were really, you know, it was only one place to go and that was to, to get married. And she said, I've had to make a decision. She said, I cannot be unequally yoked. And I have to choose between you and Jesus. And she said, I choose Jesus. You can't compromise there, no. my friend. And what she did, she had been taking me to Mylon Lefebvre concerts, Rich Mullen concerts, uh, to the churches that had all the hot musicians that played in there, and, and uh, Noel Paul Stuckey and all this stuff, trying to reach me that way. But when she, that was talking, she prayed over me. But when she walked it out, and I thought, my gosh, you know, I'll change gurus for you, um, but you know, you won't. And I just thought I want, I want to care about something as much as she cares about Jesus. So. But it's the difference between a way to the Father yeah, and the way to right, the Father, right? And you had to come to that yeah. place and acknowledge that, right? So the outcome of that is uh, now, you know, I have a ministry and I'm reaching thousands of people like Phil and Chuck are all the time. That's great. And uh, a lot of them come just because of the Beatles thing. So, what a great magnet that is! Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So this is third book for you. This is the third book. The right. first book, the Beatles, the Bible, and Bodega Bay. Is right. this, it's not in print anymore, is it? It's uh, no, but you can get it. It's uh, you can get it on Amazon still. Okay. Yeah. Great, great book. <clears throat> fact, when somebody gave it to me, it was um, I was reading wonderful stories that I wanted to to, to know more about. Yeah. But every other chapter was like a psalm. You had written yeah. like a psalm. And just your, you know, your musings of, of you know, just um, you walking and talking with God. That's a great right. book. Oh, it's Fantastic an incredible book. book. Yeah. yeah, so that's half Beatles and half spiritual journey. Then yeah. the white book is uh, really a secular book by a, a Christian publisher and a Christian writer. And it talks about that whole, it's Beatles stories, but other people I worked with in that whole era with the Roy Orbisons and all the people from that time. So that's a book about the Beatles and the era that they were in. And then between Wyoming's, <laughs> yes, yeah, the current book. It kind of Tuesday. goes back to the original format, to where I I'm telling show business stories, I'm doing a travel log, but then I'm you know it's late at night and I'm having these uh, conversations with God again. So it's uh, yeah, folks, we're going to take a break. Uh, Ken Mansfield, Phil Kecky, Chuck Gerard in the studio with us. We're going to play a song.